It's now 6 o'clock right here on Big Breakfast. Today FM, today is hit music. Hey, I'm Pauline. And I'm Alan. Tune in to The Breakfast Show on Today FM with Pauline and I every weekday morning. From 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. Right here on Today FM, today is hit music. Today FM, today is hit music. FPC News, I'm Amrita Priya Darshni. In this bulletin, suspended opposition MP Ratu Nenga Malalam Balabu publishes public apology to Speaker of Parliament. Peacekeepers honoured for their contribution in peacekeeping services in the Middle East. FPC TV to air FIFA Under-20 World Cup. First High Court Judge Justice David Elfred will rule next week on whether or not to strike out a petition challenging the awarding of a vacant parliamentary seat to Sadelpa candidate Mikaele Lewere. Under the Constitution, candidates who hold public office are not eligible for election to Parliament. Lewere, at the time the seat became vacant, held office with the Fijian Teachers Association. Over the last two days, the Court of Disputed Returns heard from three parties on a legal challenge brought against the Electoral Commission by the Attorney General. Maggie Boyle was in the court and filed this story. On the 18th of May, the Attorney General filed an election petition challenging the Electoral Commission's awarding of the vacant seat to Michaela Liawere. The civil case, as a matter of law, must be argued and decided within 21 days of when the electoral petition was filed. Last week, Thursday, lead counsel for Liawere, John Apted, filed an application to strike out the AG's petition. Yesterday, Apted presented his submission to the court. It took close to three hours and ended at nightfall. He summarized in his argument that the court did not have jurisdiction on the matter, that the petition didn't comply with the mandatory requirements under the Constitution, and that it was out of time in its filing. Aptad also argued that the Attorney General himself shouldn't have signed the petition, saying there were explicit clauses in the Constitution that support his interpretation. Court resumed this morning with counsel for the Attorney General, Devanesh Sharma, arguing that the petition has merit and that the constitutional clauses referred to by Aptad are a matter of interpretation. In particular, Sharma highlighted that Lee Aware, in his response to the Electoral Commission, did not clarify whether or not he had resigned or would resign from the FTA. The Electoral Commission did not present any submissions to the court. High Court Judge in the matter, Justice David Alfred, will make his ruling on Tuesday next week. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. A letter of apology from suspended opposition parliamentarian Ratu Nenga Malalam Balavu, addressed to the Speaker of Parliament, Dr. Chiko Luveni, has been published in the Fiji Times today. The letter, dated May 22nd, reads... Pursuant to paragraph D of the motion passed by the House of Representatives last night, I hereby give you my public apology for the breaches of privilege and contempt that the majority of the House found against me. In the letter, Ratune Ngama advises Dr. Luveni that he will be seeking legal advice as to further action. And Ratune Ngama is suspended from Parliament for two years for making derogatory statements in the Itoke language against the Speaker at a Sodelpa constituency meeting in Makoi, Nasinu. Hundreds of retired servicemen and women and members of the Diplomatic Corps gathered at the National War Memorial site in Suva today to commemorate those who have lost their lives during peacekeeping missions. Ali Kimbia has more. Today not only marks in history the first ever commemoration service to be held in Fiji, but it also falls within the 70th anniversary of the United Nations to honor the invaluable peacekeeping services and a special day for the country to honor the memory of those who have lost their lives in the course of peace. Uh, more particularly today uh, two of our soldiers um, uh, will be honored in New York, uh, um, Commander Tuisawau and uh, another soldier who, um, who passed away in the last 12 months in the battle. Uh, uh, so far we have lost over 60 Fijians in, in peacekeeping battlefields, different peacekeeping uh, battlefields around the world. The significance of this occasion has enabled some of the peacekeeping veterans to reflect on some of the experience while on peacekeeping missions. 
Yes, uh, this is uh, Don Memory Lane now, as far as I'm concerned. Eh? Being a uh, senior warrior of Class 1, I've been retired for the last uh, past years, and I was uh, fortunate to have uh, been a member of the first contingent, Fijian Infantry Regiment, 2nd Battalion. For me, it's the most important uh, event. Uh, first is the, for us to remember those who have fallen and uh, the struggle or the strife that we have uh, came through up till today. Fiji's first peacekeeping missions left our shores in May 1978 to be part of the United Nations interim force in Lebanon. Thousands of servicemen and women have represented Fiji in 23 peacekeeping missions under the United Nations flag. Ali Kibia, FBC News. Prime Minister Vorenge Bainimarama has called on the international community to stand shoulder to shoulder with the Pacific if we are to have any hope against the real threat of climate change. Speaking at the 71st session of the UN Economic and Social Commission of Asia and the Pacific in Thailand yesterday, Bainimarama said climate change is a looming catastrophe that we are utterly powerless as Pacific Islanders to avert. After the break, new government boat to provide services to Benga and Vatulele. Welcome back to FBC News. Now the case of the five men charged with multiple counts of aggravated robbery act with intent to cause grievous harm and theft of a motor vehicle has been transferred to the High Court. Cheke Vakrao Rawa, Seremaya Mundura, Mosesi Tarao, Tevita Nganganivalu and Wate Balai Onua alleged to have attempted to rob a bottle shop restaurant in Suva last week. Police have completed their investigations and the accused will now be kept at the remand centre. Police Commissioner Major General Ben Hunewald, who was dining at the restaurant, was injured when the attempted when he attempted to stop the robbery. Japan has handed over new equipment worth more than $5 million to the Fiji Meteorology Service for the improvement of disaster risk management. The technologically advanced weather system will raise the capacity to predict and monitor natural disasters like floods, tsunamis and cyclones. Christopher Chand reports. The handover of the advanced meteorology system worth millions of dollars will give the Nandi Weather Office much needed advancement. For me, this is, this is simply about saving lives, not only in Fiji, but also in other Pacific Island countries, because the Fiji Meteorological Service serves the wider South Pacific region. It took four years to build the system beginning in 2011. It is aimed at promoting international cooperation between Fiji and Japan in the field of disaster management. That the assistance is a timely one for Fiji and the region given the role that the Fiji Met Office plays in terms of keeping track of the global weather patterns. One of the equipment handed over is the wind profiler to help with aviation services. This is to help us improve our um, sensing of the wind speed and wind direction uh, up to a height of about 4,000 meters in the air. And it's located here in Nandi to help with the aviation services specifically, especially with the descending and ascending of aircrafts. Other equipment donated were an automatic weather station for Suva, a tide gauge and four lightning detectors installed around the country. The automated systems will greatly help improve weather forecasting. Christopher Chand, FBC News. Brushing regularly, eating the right types of food and looking after your smile are some of the most important tasks for children. This is the message delivered to students of Talevu North College by the Assistant Health Minister Veena Bhatnagar at the launch of the 2015 National Oral Health Week. Alan Stoltz has more. The Health Ministry has taken it upon itself to implement strategies that will help counter the increasing trend of poor dental health. 
One such strategy is the National Oral Health Week, dedicated to awareness on keeping good dental care. In the past years, only primary school children were visited by the health team. Now the ministry is expanding to also include the secondary schools. This is in response to the growing health issues that affect adolescents and which lead to non-communicable diseases later in adulthood. The National Oral Health Week is normally launched and celebrated in primary schools around the country. The launching at Thailevu North College today indicated the ministry's move to reach out to the wider section of the community. Recent dental surveys in Fiji have identified adolescents as one of the vulnerable groups along with preschool children in Itaukei adults in rural areas. This is associated with poor nutritional habits, no toothbrushing, and even unhealthy social habits of smoking and kava and alcohol abuse. But Naga says the ministry knows the importance of oral health and hopes that parents, teachers and guardians pass down positive practices to children. Ellen Stahls, FBC News. For the first time, people of Benga and Vatulele will be provided with a government shipping franchise. The government vessel Vunilangi will begin its services to these two neighbouring islands come Monday next week. Savara Tambua has the story. The MV Vunilangi is the government's latest addition to its fleet. Transport Permanent Secretary says the ship will visit the two islands every six months. Once we firm up on these two trips, hopefully in 2000, uh, before the commencement of the first quarter in 2016, we would be able to be in a position to make a decision on the frequency of trips that we can uh, to make to these uh, two islands. About 4,000 people live on the two islands and they normally travel by private and public boats to the mainland. Chonathan in Dambea Fukua village in Benga says the new initiative by the government to provide a shipping service is a huge relief for them. The manager of Mbenga Yanuda Secondary School, Sero Pepeli Ratubokiboki, says they will be able to save a lot of money transporting building materials and other big items and equipment. We happy because the vessel is big and we will not find other means of transport to take us to Novo. Now we will board from Suva and both at our own source. Last week we paid $1,600 to board owners for the transporting of the school lab building materials and now we are grateful to government since we only pay $85 to the government shipping services. There are so many. A child under 12 years of age will have to get a consent letter from the head teacher of the school to be able to pay a boat fare of $15. Children under 5 years old will be able to travel for free. The normal boat fare is $30 per person. Sabera Tabua, FBC News. Well, Bollywood's first rock singer Himesh Reshmiya's first concert in Fiji was a big hit. Music director, singer, actor and producer performed in front of a huge fan crowd at the FMF Gymnasium in Suva. During the three-hour show, Himesh sang most of his hit songs, which are popular among the Fijian fans, which saw them dancing to the beat. The show is presented by Iris Promotions in association with Mirchi FM. Himesh will be performing at Prince Charles Park in Nandi this evening. Well, it's time for Friday Night Sports with Jamie. Thank you, Amrita, and good evening. Coming up, we get an update from the Fiji Under-20 football side in Christchurch for the FIFA World Cup and the record turnout at school's swim competition today. We'll have this and more after the break. Choo, choo, choo. Hey, hey, Namaste Fiji. Aapke har ek problem ke dawa lekar main a gayi hu. 9 se 12 baje tak aapki saheli reno. Choo, choo, choo. 40 ne 20 ka dikhna hai. Main hu na aapke saath mein Mirchi FM par 9 se 12 baje tak Monday to Friday. Mirchi, it's hot. The Fiji Broadcasting Corporation today officially announced its live coverage of selected matches of the FIFA Under-20 World Cup. 
Sponsored by Vodafone, FBC TV will air all of Fiji's pool games, both semi-finals and the final live. Rohit Deo has more. A done deal. Fijians around the country will get to watch every kick by the national under-20 boys at the FIFA World Cup. We'll have exclusive coverage for under-20 FIFA World Cup and uh, there will be three, we'll be showing three live matches of Fiji, including the semi-finals, both semi-finals and the final as well. There will be delayed uh, matches shown on the day of the, of the event. For Vodafone, we've always played an active role in the growth of sport. Uh, we've been involved in rugby, uh, rugby league and soccer. And, and once again, we, we, say, we continuously say that this is uh, gaining momentum especially for the soccer field. Oh, it's a great thing. It's a great thing to have uh, these young boys uh, <laughs> being exposed to our, our country and it's going to go worldwide. And the point that we've got to look at is this under-20. A lot of people not realizing the magnitude of it. Eh? Uh, the under-20 side has had like players like Messi and uh, also uh, Neymar that have come through and Maradona. Uh, it's really good that they're showing uh, Fiji's games because it's the first time they qualified. And uh, it's... It's really proud for the people that uh, they are showing the game. It'll be good to the to the youth coming up and uh, people who who take uh, soccer as a profession. It's good that they'll be, uh, be watching the the game from home. And I wish the boys all the best in the in their games. Meanwhile, the Fiji Football Association has commended FBC TV for showing FIFA Under 20 World Cup matches live on free-to-air television. First, uh, first time in history of uh, football that uh, our team has been has qualified for a FIFA Finals uh, World Cup, and uh, it will be a, it will be great for all in the country uh, to like uh, they'll be watching the games live and uh, it it will be a lot of uh, bring a lot of benefits to the people uh, upcoming players and players who are looking uh, looking forward to become uh, footballers in life and. The FIFA Under-20 World Cup starts tomorrow with New Zealand taking on Ukraine, while the first live match will be on Monday, Fiji's opening pool match against Germany. The Vodafone Fiji football side had its first training run in Christchurch today ahead of the start of the FIFA Under-20 World Cup. The cold is taking some getting used to, but coach Frank Friedina remains adamant that the side will be good to go for the first game against Germany on Monday. Rohit Deo has more. The early morning training session saw the players being put through their faces by coach Frank Farina. Yeah, no, very happy, you know, to get everything out of the legs. Um, it was a particularly heavy field uh, in, in Cambridge or Hamilton the other day. Uh, this is quality, you know, it's a very, very good training facility. Um, much better than what we experienced there, so you know, get the first run, it's, it's great. Amento is now fully focused on the first match and has been drilling it to the players what needs to be done to encounter the European Giants. There's one thing knowing what they're going to do, but the, the other thing is trying to stop them. So, you know, it's just to give the boys, a, you know, an idea of who potentially they could be coming up against and, and the style that they'll play and, 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 the, and the style that we'll play to try and, you know, best counter this. The atmosphere and environment in camp is being described to as second to none. It's an exciting time for, for any 20-year-old, you know, whether you're from Germany or, or Fiji or Uzbekistan or Honduras, you know, it's, it's a World Cup and... You know, it's, it's a fantastic experience and, and it's exciting. So I can understand, you know, I was 20 once and played in the 1983 Youth World Cup. So I knew, I know how important it felt for me and how exciting it was for me. So, you know, we're going back 35 years, but, you know, I'm, I'm happy these boys are getting the chance to experience that. It's now the countdown to Monday with the eyes of the football world fixed on Fiji. With the Germans expected to come out firing, our boys with the expectations from the nation, for sure will not be a walkover. Rohit Deo. NBC Sports. The National School Swimming Championships attracted a record turnout at the Domodo Aquatic Centre in Suva today. Over 600 swimmers from 39 schools took to the pools, which is a 20% increase compared to last year. Officials say this is a positive indication of the development outreach programs they have undertaken to promote water safety. It's a real testament to the development of the sport in Fiji. Uh, we've got more than a 20% increase in the swimmers from last year, more than 100 extra swimmers from last year's tournament. Um, so this shows that uh, swimming in Fiji is really developing, which is great news for, for all the kids. 21 records were broken in the secondary schools competition today, while nine records were set in the primary school division. The schools meet will continue tomorrow.
Close to 400 players are currently competing at the Tasloto Fiji Open Tennis Tournament that got underway in Nandi on Wednesday. Organizers told FBC Sports that they expect over 350 matches to be played over the five-day tournament. Josephine Navula has the details. Now in its 108th year, the tournament has attracted a large number of participants from across the Pacific, Australia and New Zealand. Tournament coordinator David Smith says this has resulted to more playoffs. Wednesday we completed 69 matches. Yesterday, 71. Today will be the biggest day of the event, 75. Probably lesser matches tomorrow, probably around 60 odd. And then uh, Sunday, probably 30 to 40. So you collect all that together, it's probably something like 350 matches that we're going to play in five days. Smith says the organisers are impressed with the performance of the players. The standard when you've got the likes of William O'Connell, Devash Garetti, you know, Annie O'Connell, even Florence Wasco went to college at the University of Hawaii. So it's a very, very strong uh, uh, contingent. The tournament will narrow down to the semi-finals to be played tomorrow. The finals will be held on Sunday at the Denara Record and Golf Club in Nandi. Josephine Navula. FBC Sports. And that's it from Sports Tonight. I'll be back again on Monday. Until then, have yourselves a safe weekend. Good evening. Reserve Bank of Fiji Governor Barry Whiteside says performance across all sectors of the economy are positive, buoyed by the favorable financial conditions. Whiteside says while a slowdown in private sector credit was noted in February and March, the momentum picked up again last month. Economic activity continues to strengthen, backed by increased consumption and investment. Risk from the rising import demand associated with a growing economy, coupled with a likely slowdown in the economies of Fiji's key trading partners, could weaken Fiji's external position. The annual inflation rate slowed to 1.5% last month. Fine weather prevailed over most parts of the country today. Suva was the coolest place today, recording 27 degrees on the temperature chart. Bay and Lambasa the warmest with 32 degrees. Going into the weekend, expect some cloudy periods with some showers over the eastern parts and interior of the Liza Islands. Elsewhere, it will be fine and it will be cool at night. Now, the further outlook, fine apart from brief showers of the eastern parts and interior of the larger islands, cool at night. Our main points again, High Court Judge Justice David Alfred will rule next week on whether or not to strike out a petition challenging the awarding of a vacant parliamentary seat to Sedelpa candidate Mikaele Lewere. Suspended opposition MP Ratune Ngama Lalambalavu publishes public apology to Speaker of Parliament. And Fijian peacekeepers honoured for their contribution to peacekeeping services in the Middle East. On to our poll question of the week, should there be stricter requirements for getting a driver licence? Visit FPC's website to take part. Now you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizenseyes at fpc.com.fj or you could share it with us on Facebook or if you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your news tips at FPC News or hashtag FPC News. You've been watching FPC News. I'm Amrita Priya Darshni. Good night. Sarwan <laughs> <laughs>